Hello guys and welcome once more to my workshop. Today I'm going to show you how I built a contraption that will help me to take better pictures, film in a more controlled environment and also add some special effects to my videos without spending a lot of money at all. Did you ever want to sell stuff online but then you weren't able to take good pictures? Or maybe you just like photography or have even thought about starting a YouTube channel? Well then this project might be of interest to you. Because I will not only show here how I built this, but also share some of my experience in video making on a rather small budget. So what I'm about to build here could be called a kind of photo box. It's a one by one by one meter cube that will provide neutral even lighting from at least three sides, as well as a background that is evenly white and has a kind of optical infinity effect that is supposed to make freeform selection of previously photographed objects as easy as possible. Freeform selection is the technique of erasing background colors or elements to create standalone objects. And I want to do that in both still and moving pictures. Adding monochrome backgrounds like a green screen will make it possible to use a chroma key filter in video editing with better results. The very good lighting situation inside the cube will furthermore allow us to experiment with slow motion recording and 3D scanning later in this video. But first, how did I build the box? Since it's always been the philosophy of this channel to reuse old materials, I started building three 1x1 one one meter screens by means of white bed sheets that I had bought in a thrift store for a few bucks. I then used some cheap spruce 2x4s and built rectangular frames to which the bed sheets were fastened with screws and washers. In the next step, some OSB panels were cut into two 1x1 one one meter pieces and they were connected to each other with some more 2x4s. A piece of 1mm thick aluminium sheet that I had left over from another project was then bent and screwed to the boards in order to smoothen that edge. In the next step I painted everything white with some wall paint left over from the last renovation. But the surface turned out to be too sensitive and not even enough. So in the next step I ordered some white PVC floor covering, cut it to the right dimensions and glued it and screwed it to the OSB panels. There are smoother materials, but since I often film heavy, dirty, rusty objects with lots of corners and edges, I needed something resilient that can also be easily cleaned. Floor covering was a good choice for that. And in order to provide even lighting from the left and right sides as well as from the top, I ordered a set of 10 neutral white LED lamps that are actually replacements for old-fashioned fluorescent tubes. Before gluing the tubes onto wooden frames, I had opened their enclosures and soldered some wires directly to the driver boards inside and then disconnected the metal pins that protrude from the sides of the enclosures. This way the lights can be directly connected to an outlet without the need for sockets of any kind. And eventually all nine LED lamps were connected in parallel. As an addition I also ordered some green PVC and added it to the box. It can be rolled up like this when the white background is needed. And the photo box was now ready for action. And here is some of the test footage.
So I guess I've been able to do the things that I've been planning to do. Plus some higher frame rate footage that I filmed inside the box with my phone. The box is not strictly needed for that, but you can see here that the picture quality is much lower and noisier if you do it outside of that controlled environment inside the box. So what kind of equipment and editing software do I use? I don't want to turn this into an unpaid advertisement and that's why I have just provided this sheet here so that those who do care can look it up without me having to talk too much about it. You can also see here that it's basically almost all used equipment and that I never paid a ton of money for any of it. And that can be a message to you out there that you don't need to do that either. If you want to start a YouTube channel, the most important thing is not the equipment. It is that you have something interesting to show or a story to tell. Content matters. At the moment I use the Canon EOS 60D in the shop and for most filming outside I use the Sony Xperia XC2, a phone with which I'm very happy. I bought it used for 200 bucks, it can film in 4K, has great video stabilization and is even capable of short high frame rate recordings which you could see here in the video. One more gimmick it comes with is a 3D scanning software. And that is something else I hoped I would be able to do with okay quality inside the photo box. So let's see how that works. So for a test, we will try to scan this sponge here. It has a nice rich texture and a rather simple geometry. That is why I think it's well suited for this type of 3D scan. I manually move the phone all around the sponge as well as I can without slipping. This is rather tedious and needs some practice, especially in the beginning you will make mistakes and the program will lose track of the object. But I've done this a dozen times and I feel like I have gotten better at this. The app is able to pick up a lot of points on all sides of the object, which is a good sign. It will then define this nearly spherical space around the object and reduce it to a number of polygons with ever decreasing size until you will get an okay approximation of the object. The textures are then overlaid. Doing this inside the box rather than in the outside world has the advantage that there is lighting from all around and not too many textures on the underground or background that the app could misidentify as part of that object. Due to that predefined spherical space, a portion of the ground is always ending up in the final 3D scan though. But what is really cool is that you can just export this file and import it into Blender and then you can clean it up. I think it was never that easy to make 3D models for a video game, for example. So this video was like a little field trip into the world of photography and special effects on a shoestring budget. And its purpose is really just to encourage you guys out there to just try and see what you can do with the things that are at your disposal before buying expensive equipment. And if you liked it, please give it a like. For me, there is no other way of knowing. And if you want to support the channel, you can visit my Patreon under patreon.com slash TPAI or make a donation via PayPal. Links in the video description. See you soon with another Reparathon.